Good day subscribers and welcome back to The Contrarian everybody. I hope you are all doing well. Today I'll be talking about why, in my opinion, it might actually be possible for real estate prices to come down after rates begin to come down as well. And the key word there I said is after rates begin coming down. And I'll talk about why this might actually happen, even though it sounds like a very strange phenomenon. Now typically you would expect that if rates come down from their elevated levels that they have reached now, about 7.6% for a 30-year fixed mortgage, that's about a, you know, a 10, 15-year high for mortgage rates. So that's very high. You might typically expect for housing prices to actually begin to rise if these rates begin to come down because you know typically you would assume that there's a lot of people waiting on the sidelines to step in and buy houses should the rates come down and so you might not typically expect for prices to also come down at that point but there's maybe a key thing i've become aware of a key trend several people who i've met actually already this year you know since real estate prices have come down a little bit but more so since rates have gone up as much as they have i've met several people already who would like to move into a larger house, you know, because they're they've had, you know, three kids since they bought their first house. They want to move into a larger house. They want to sell their previous one and move into a larger house, but they're not doing that right now for a key reason. And that is that typically they locked in a three or four or five percent mortgage on their previous house. And um, the issue with trying to then buy a new house is they're now having to pay probably a higher price than what they bought their original house for but they're also having to basically give up their you know two three four percent mortgage and now re you know repurchase another house at a 7.6 percent mortgage now there are some maybe tools that one can use to try to pay down the mortgage rates on the front end there's you know mortgage pay downs that one can do and such but that's you know, only effective to a certain extent, you're still, even if you knock it down a couple percentage points, you're still probably above what you are currently financing and paying off your mortgage for. And it just makes it to where looking at the payments on a larger house, even with selling your previous house, uh, assuming you could sell it, you know, it just doesn't work out. The math doesn't work out. And, you know, I'm not saying that it's 100% certain that real estate prices come down once uh, rates begin to come down. But I've actually met quite a few people at this point who are waiting to sell a previous home and buy a new one um, just because of basically they're stuck right now. They're stuck with their current house. Now, obviously, certain life situations could change this. They could have to just, you know, suck up and sell their previous house, buy the new one. But those who have the luxury of waiting are choosing to do so right now. And so that does, you know, allow for there to be a effective buildup in inventory that would begin to be listed as being on sale once these people would be able to sell it to buy another one. And so, you know, in my mind, that does allow for certain regions perhaps to undergo a phenomenon where you would have mortgage rates come down from their elevated levels maybe in the coming six months they come down uh, but at the same time you might actually continue to see prices come down as well um, speaking for my current you know housing market that i'm in is billings montana it's not one of the you know high-flying cyclical housing markets that has been maybe typical for a lot of the touristy type destination locations in montana a lot of people have moved to montana recently as well since COVID and everything. So Bozeman's definitely been a red hot real estate market. But looking at Billings, it tends to be more of a linearly tracking real estate market where there's just consistent growth over time with the general economy. Um, you know, maybe there's some cyclical cycles that play into that as well because Billings is more dependent on the oil industry. There's a lot of refineries here, but you know, Billings is probably more typical of a linear type of housing market um, something like indianapolis or 
you know, St. Louis, Missouri, something that just grows gradually over time. It's not one of the Phoenix, Arizona's or Bozeman, Montana's out there that's exploded recently. Now, real estate prices here in Billings have come down maybe anywhere from 10 to 20, 25% maybe at the peak in the last year. They have come down a little bit um, from, from their peak, which was kind of reached at the end of 2021 there. Um, but, you know, looking at real estate prices and how much they have come down relative to how much rates have gone up, it does suggest that prices still have a ways to come down until the total affordability actually gets back to the mean of where most buyers would be looking to get in. Um, you know, looking at the total affordability index, which a lot of people on financial Twitter and other places have pointed out ad nauseum, it's, it's basically reached a blow off peak similar to what we saw back in the um, housing bubble, right previous to the housing bubble when that began to happen. And a lot of them out there have said, you know, okay, uh, it's likely that this is kind of a repeat of then that the housing market will crash, go through something like that. Um, I'm not saying that that couldn't happen, but you know it might be the case of where you see something like what I mentioned play out, where it's maybe not as much of an issue of you know mortgages being issued to borrowers who are not worthy of mortgages. Um, lending standards have definitely tightened a lot in the last year or so. Um, I do speak a little bit from personal knowledge there. I did kind of look into buying a house. I didn't end up doing it maybe because I think that prices and rates will continue to come down. So I am kind of acting on my own convictions there. Um, but yeah, lending standards have definitely tightened. It is harder to get a mortgage. They're not handing them out to just anybody. Um, and so, you know, it's maybe not as much of a, a comparison to a 2006, 2007 era. Um, it's maybe an issue of financing at this point. Um, rates have just gone up so quickly, you know, on the back of the rates of everything else going up very quickly that a lot of buyers have just been priced out of markets or priced out of the house that they were really hoping to get. And so those who have the luxury to wait are waiting. And like I just mentioned, those who are waiting to buy another house are also waiting to sell their previous one. So um, that could definitely play into this dynamic as well, where even if rates begin to come down, you could still see uh, housing prices come down as well, because all of a sudden there's more inventory being listed. And at a certain point, um, sellers are going to need to bring down their prices to where buyers will step in. They won't really have the luxury of waiting around for six months for a house to sell, um, which in a lot of cases here in Billings has been the case where just the duration of listings has gone way up, obviously because the expense ratio has gone up. There's not as many people just willing to pay these rates and prices out there. So, you know, all this being said, maybe this is just a way of saying that we're in a very unique dynamic right now in the housing market. Um, you could expect maybe some unusual things to play out, like what I talked about. Um, but all that being said, I'm not trying to provide any tailored financial advice to any of you, but I would like to hear what you think about all of what I just mentioned. Rates, housing, prices, what might be expected. Uh, I'd love to hear about all of this in the comment section below. Hope to see all of you again at some point.